In my generation, we got 250 bucks a month. And I'm happy for the folks that today who've served in Afghanistan, who served in Iraq for the, the benefit that they, uh, they receive. But it's uh, not only been a great benefit for the veterans and their families, it uh, puts uh, in the words of, I think it's uh, uh, Holly Petraeus. I think it's Polly Petraeus who works at the uh, Consumer, Consumer uh, Protection uh, Bureau. Polly said that uh, what the GI Bill does is it also puts like sort of a bullseye on the, uh, the uh, veterans. As they come back and uh, what happens is a lot of uh, college and university and training schools want to help those GIs, their spouses, or maybe their kids go to school. Some of them are for-profits, some of them are non-profits, some of them are public colleges and universities. Some of them do a great job. Even some of the for-profits do a great job. But some of them, and you've mentioned some of them here today, uh, uh, Senator Durbin, some of them do not. And what they do, they spend more money on trying to recruit people to come to their schools and they actually spend educating them. They're preparing them for, for careers, allegedly for where there's really no jobs. And you mentioned what Corinthian uh, has done to place people in work opportunities for a month or so, just so that it'll look like people are uh, being gainfully employed. There's uh, a lot of money to be made by these for-profit colleges and universities. And for the ones that aren't the white hats, but the, uh, the black hats, uh, the, uh, what's happening to the GIs, and frankly to taxpayers, is shameful. Just shameful. And uh, I want to say about 19 maybe 1992, maybe in the early 1990s, here, uh, maybe on this floor, the Senate debated whether or not there should be some way to harness market forces to ensure that, uh, that uh, the, uh, whether it's people using the Pell Grants or other federal aid programs, or, uh, or maybe the GI Bill, but whether or not they, uh, we should somehow harness market forces to ensure that taxpayer money going to people going to college was being well used. And initially, when, uh, when Congress adopted something called the 8515 rule, uh, the idea was that uh, at least 15 percent of, of the students at a school where they're receiving federal uh, uh, assistance, that they would uh, have to be coming on non-federal money. Non-federal money, 85 percent of the students. And uh, that seemed to make sense. And, uh, so for a while, that, uh, that worked pretty well. Then we the rule was changed to the 90-10 rule, so that like uh, at least 10% of the students, 10% of the revenues had to, to come from non-federal sources. And the idea was to have to use market forces to ensure that the quality, the, the quality of the program was actually worthwhile at that school. And then uh, we had this new GI Bill. Then we had the new GI Bill. And it's, uh, we have spent, I think, and uh, Senator probably knows better than me, but I think we have spent today close to $50 billion on the uh, uh, Iraq uh, or Afghanistan uh, GI Bill. Close to $50 billion. Probably dwarfs whatever we spent for folks coming back after the Vietnam War. Some of the uh, smart, uh, smart for-profit colleges figured out a loophole, though. And what they figured out is the, the law didn't really, so it was first adopted, didn't really focus on the GI Bill, because it wasn't all that robust. And the, the 9010 rule, 8515 rule, the 9010 rule, focused on stuff that did not include the GI Bill. So when folks, veterans, go to college, and the GI Bill helps pay for their tuition, or for their spouses or their children, that does not count as toward the 90%. So what we have is, as a result, there's like a loophole that allows a, a college or university, private college or university, to realize as much as 100% of their revenues from the federal government, 100%. Nothing about market forces, 10%, 15% of your students have to come on by non-federal means. All of them, all of them are there on the federal government's dole. The, I think among the people who pushed for the, uh, the early 85-15 rule were uh, Bob Dole and Phil Graham here. And they said uh, a long time ago that, uh, you know, we ought to have some, uh, something that, uh, like the 90-10 rule. And uh, now a couple of years before that, a guy that uh, Senator Durbin would remember named uh, uh, William Bennett, remember him? Secretary of Education. Uh, he, here's what he called for uh, profit trade schools. Here's what he called them, 1987. He said, this is his quote, 
diploma mills designed to trick the poor into taking on federally backed debt, milk them for their loan money, and then wash them out or graduate them ill-prepared to run a job market and pay off their loans. That's what he called them. And as I said earlier, there's some for-profits that uh, do a really good job, but there's a bunch that don't. And that was the case in 1987, and unfortunately, it's the case today. I, uh, I would just want to say, we have, you have, you have I have, Tom Harkin, uh, in past years, have uh, continuously drawn the attention of our colleagues and anybody who wants to listen to this, to this, uh, this issue. And this needs to be fixed. It needs to be fixed, and I want to thank Senator Durbin for working so hard and letting me help him a little bit on this stuff. And, uh, and uh, I think we're starting to make, uh, we're starting to break through. And some of the folks that are worst, the worst actors in this uh, business are starting to fold, and that is a good thing.